Hello! My birthday was September 2nd, so to celebrate, I've decided to upload episodes from my mindfulness podcast series, Reading with Carrie, every day through the month of September. Once we hit October, I'll be posting the episodes every Friday with the bonus minisodes on Saturday. To catch the episodes as they air every Wednesday, you can subscribe to my podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Click the link in the description below to go directly to my podcast's website. Hope you enjoy! Hello and welcome to Reading with Carrie, a mindfulness podcast series that can be used as a sleep aid or to ease your anxiety and relieve your stress. I am your host, Carrie Fable, and I am so thankful that you've decided to spend some time with me. This story requires a disclaimer. No, not the one where I read this a few years ago, which is actually true. But this story had me crying at the end. I try to read only stories with happy endings, or at least versions of fairy tales with the happier conclusions, but I also don't want to only read stories that everyone has heard before. There's a strong theme of nostalgia in this story, and I do think it's beautiful. That's all I'll say for now. In an effort to kind of prepare you mentally and emotionally, let's do a really nice breathing exercise this time around. This exercise is a mindful emotional state of happiness. So first, we're going to focus on our breathing. And without changing it, let it naturally, organically come. Nice deep breathing in. But don't force it. Deep breathing out. We're just trying to get our relaxation kind of flowing. Now put your feet on the ground or whatever surface you're resting on and gently push onto the floor or onto the bedding. Press and notice the sensations on the bottoms of your feet touching the surface. Just be in the moment. If you're pushing, you might even begin feeling a pulse in your toes or your feet. Deep breathing in. Hold it for a moment and exhale out. Deep breath in. Deep breath. And now, while you're still kind of focusing on your breathing, consider where happiness comes from for you. Does happiness come from your heart? Or your mind? Or maybe your belly? Where does it come from for you? Discover where the idea of happiness comes from and focus on that area. Whatever happiness means to you, Maybe a smile or an energy that runs through your body. Or maybe happiness is relaxing the muscles in your shoulders. Expand now wider and wider and let the feeling of the happiness flow through your body. Just feel more and more happy. Maybe wiggle your body. Maybe tense a muscle and then relax it. You'll tense on an inhale, hold the tension, and relax the tension as you exhale. And you can move through your whole body that way, especially if you're feeling tension somewhere specific, like your shoulders. Just feel more and more happy and allow yourself only to focus on this and be happy. Remember what this feeling of happiness feels like. You can have this feeling of happiness whenever you choose, just by being in this moment. This feeling of happiness can take over your mind and 
and your body and your soul and your whole spirit. Really feel the happiness, the contentment, the relaxation. Now slowly open your eyes and just be in the moment of happiness. Just be. Just be. And as always, I like to indulge in a nice, happy sigh. Let's slowly take a nice deep inhale. And sigh. Congratulations, you finished this exercise. And now here's the story. Urashima and the Turtle a Japanese fairy tale. There was once a young fisherman, the son of sons of fishermen. He loved the sea, the crash of the waves and the shifting tides. He lived at the shore. He loved to watch the sea by night and by day, winter and summer, stormy and fair. His name was Urashima. At dawn he went out in his boat. He came home again at dusk. Sometimes the fishing was good, Sometimes it was poor. If he had had his way, he would never have kept the fish he caught. He'd have thrown them back in the water to live, for he thought the fish were beautiful. Their skins flashed silver. They were delicately made and strong. Late one afternoon, Urashima felt a tug at his line. He reeled in. He expected to see the shimmer of a sea bass. Instead, he saw a turtle. Urashima smiled and threw the turtle back in the water. I'd sooner go hungry tonight than kill a young turtle, he said. Turtles live long, long lives, and this one was young. The turtle hit the water in a wide splash of foam. From the spray sprung a girl more beautiful than the day and the night together. She came to sit at Urashima's side. She said, I am the sea king's daughter. We live at the bottom of the sea. Father, let me change into a turtle to test your good heart. Indeed, you are good and kind. Will you come and share my dragon palace in the kingdom of green waves? Urashima saw only her great beauty. He wanted to be with her always. Yes, he said. They each of them took an oar. They rowed the boat beneath the waves to the bottom of the sea. Crystalline fish with golden crests swam to escort them. Before the sun had set, they reached the palace. It was made of coral and pearl. It glimmered as if all the world's jewels were shining underwater in a soft wash of moonlight. Velvet finned little dragons obeyed their every wish in that palace. They fed on the delicacies that the sea gives only to those who love her. In the perfect quiet of that place, Urashima lived four years with his princess. Day and night, the sea anemones danced, light, soundless, and slow, in the luminous water. They were very happy, until one day, Urashima saw a young turtle. It reminded him of the day when he'd come under the sea. He thought of his village and of his family. The princess knew at once that he was thinking of home. You miss the earth and your people, she said. If you stay here, you'll hate me for keeping you. If you go now, you may come back. Take this pearl box, tied with green ribbon. Keep it safe. It will bring you here when you're ready. But keep the ribbon tied. If the bow comes undone and the box is opened, you'll never return. Urashima got into his boat and the princess thrust it up through the waves. Soon he was on top of the water, sailing for home. There stood his hill and his cherry trees. There lay the sand where he'd built castles as a boy. Memory made his heart pound. He hurried up a path he knew well. At first he thought nothing had changed. The sky shone blue, crickets chirped, rocks stood out of the sand, as they always had. But when he came to where his house had been, he felt lost. The house was gone. Even the tree that had shadowed it was gone. He went on. All the houses were different. Children stared at him. What had happened in the four years he was under the sea? He saw an old man sitting in the sun, and he went to talk to him. Beg pardon, sir. Can you tell me how to find Urashima's house? He asked. Urashima? Said the old man, puzzled. It's an odd name. I never heard it but once before. That was in my great-grandfather's story of a boy who was drowned. His brothers, their sons, and their sons' sons lived hereabouts. 
but the family died out long before my time. It's a sad little tale, isn't it, stranger? A young man went fishing four hundred years ago and disappeared. They never even found a stick from his boat. The sea simply swallowed him up, said the old man. Fatherless, motherless, brotherless, homeless, Urashima was a stranger in his own village. The old man pointed with his cane. You might find his tombstone in the old cemetery, he said. Down that way. Slowly, Urashima went to the cemetery. There, beside his parents' tombstones and his brothers, was his own name cut in a worn old stone. Now Urashima understood. There was nothing for him in this village. Here on earth, he had been dead and gone for four hundred years. He must return at once to his beloved princess. He still had the pearl box, tied with green ribbon. He knew he mustn't lose it. He knew he should hurry, but he felt tired and discouraged. He went back to the beach slowly. He sat to rest on the sand, with the box on his knees. He wondered how he could return to the palace. Brooding without thinking, he untied the ribbon around the box. Absent-mindedly, slowly, he opened the box. A white mist drifted up and hung an instant on the air. It had the shape, cloud soft, of his dear princess. Urashima held out his arms, but the mist disappeared on a sea breeze. He ran after it, but it had gone. At the water's edge, he stopped. He felt so old. His back bent, his hands shook, his hair whitened and fell. His muscles failed and vanished. He withered away from top to toe. Soon on the white beach lay a skeleton, fit for a grave dug four hundred years before. When the moon stood above the pine trees, it shone on the waves that gather and break, gather and break, over and over, forever. It shone on a little empty pearl box and a green ribbon fluttering in the wind. The End I hope that our mindfulness exercise prepared you for the rather tragic tale. What got me was the very human reaction Urashima had to losing everything he once knew, and how he absentmindedly opened the box and sealed his fate. Had he given himself time to mourn without making his decision, I don't think he would have ever actually chosen to open the box. I think nostalgia hits all of us, and especially with those with depression or anxiety, we often linger on thoughts of the past. Chris Christofferson said, I'd trade all my tomorrows for one single yesterday, but I think we can all agree that that's no way to live. Choosing to focus on the past is no life. That's what John Corey Whaley says about nostalgia. No matter if you're thinking of something good or bad, it always leaves you a little emptier afterward. It's hard, but we need to focus on what we have now, today. We can't let our memories or the past keep us from the happiness we have available to us today. That's not to say you can't remember loved ones who have passed or friends who you are no longer close to, but you shouldn't engage with destructive what-if thoughts about the choices you have made in your life. You are where you are now. You can only go forward. And that's actually an incredibly hopeful sentiment. No matter where you are in life, it can always be a starting point for something new. A new career, a new skill learned, a new hobby found. The potential is limitless. Your potential is limitless. Thank you for listening. I welcome you back anytime you may need to hear a comforting voice or a familiar bedtime story. Title, Urashima and the Turtle. Author, unknown. Accredited as a Japanese fairy tale. Although the tale originates from the legend of Urashimako. Urashima no Ko or Ura no Shimako recorded in various pieces of literature dating to the 8th century. Version, The Golden Book of Fairy Tales, translated by Marie Ponsot and illustrated by Adrian Segur.